Hey, Marcel, thanks for joining. Jonathan, likewise, thank you very much. Marcel just recently, not long ago, upgraded and is using Java 11 in his, in his production instance. All right, I got it. All right, so I think I think the the crucial questions here, uh, maybe let's let's start the the conversations. Mike, you had you had assembled some initial slides. Do we want to look at those first as a first first conversation starter? And I'll take some notes in the the notes while we're discussing. Yeah, I'm not really sure how to let's see share my screen. Oh, oh, hang on. So let's, and it may be that we don't have you granted share permission. I did hit record. Oh, good. You did. So you should. So right next to the record. Oh, here, button, now I see it. Yeah. Okay. But you have turned on recording. Uh, yes, recording is on. Excellent. All right. So really, this is just a very skeletal outline of what I thought um, some topics for this uh, session would be. Um, I'm starting with where we are right now. Um, so there's currently Java 11 support um, since uh, the 2.164 LTS. Um, <coughs> relatively, I guess, relative is a relative term, but there's we have 55 open issues um, regarding plugins and interoperability with Java 11. Um, and then 18 issues um, currently open related to uh, core Jenkins. Um, and Mark, if you want to add anything else about the current state. Um, yeah, yeah. So the one of the one of the points there is we are. We are now in the Jenkins.io documentation recommending users use Java 11. And we're guiding them to use Java 11 in the Docker images that we build and in other, other locations suggesting it. Still, the Java 11 adoption rate is, is relatively lower, right? It's most of the Jenkins users are still running Java 8. How are we collecting that information or are we basing those numbers off of? Um, I think that there was some stats, uh, or this, re, let me make some notes here. So relatively low. And I believe that part of the stats generation process, uh, stats collected by stats.jenkins.io uh, had some Java 11 numbers in it. And Tim Jacom had shared some with me. I didn't, I don't recall what this precise source was. So that's an action item I could take if you'd like of find exact numbers relative to I was just Java 11 adoption. How, we, how we've been collecting that. Is it just anecdotal? Is there, um, uh, no, and, and it, was, it was actually numbers. This was a, this was a reported number of, of, of places where Java 11 was reported as the running JDK. And I believe the JDK is reported by Jenkins to the stats collection. Okay. Did that answer your question? Uh, yeah, it did. Thank you. Um, so I guess before we Jump for does anyone else have any uh, comments or questions about the current state of Java 11 support in Jenkins? 
So maybe it'd be a worthwhile thing to poll here. How many of the, how many of the participants are actively using Java 11 already? I know Marcel is. Ivan, are you using Java 11 or is your, are your production instances still on Java 8? Yeah, that's the thing that I'm checking right now. Um, we have a mix. We have a few in, in 11 and, and a few in, in 8. Great. Thank you. And I know Tim Jacome switched over to Java 11 about um, eight or nine months ago <coughs> and has had good results. Jonathan, Java 8 or Java 11? We're still running um, Java 8. We have uh, underlying parts of our the code base that we're running, building through Jenkins is, does a lot of crypto. And there's a lot of things that broke going from Java 8 to Java 11. We're looking into it, but we haven't really, um, even if we run Jenkins in Java 11, we still have to be doing our builds and stuff using Java 8 for now. But uh, Interesting, very good, okay, so. Jonathan running eight and has dependency. Now, are you using the Maven job type that has a strong dependency or are you using mostly freestyle jobs, not Maven, the Maven job type? It's, uh, um, they're mostly freestyle ant jobs. We've, we're starting to okay. migrate over to Ivy. Ah, good. Sort of Mavenized things. <laughs> no, that's perfect because that means you're, you could run Java 11 and just build, run your builds in Java 8. Good. Yep. Marcel, you had reported that you were running uh, Java 11 already? Yeah, I, I migrated to 11. It was uh, the major upgrade that uh, we have on the LTS version two months ago, I believe. Great, excellent, okay. And then Runcha, anything you need to report in terms of Java 11 use adoption in your world? Um, relative limited right now, actually. Uh, most okay. are still on Java 8. James or Emilio, do actually James, let's go to you first. Uh, anything on your sense of Java 11 adoption? Um, none, uh, as in it's all Java 8. Thank Wait, you. Waiting, for, waiting for Mike to finish up some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Emilio, yeah. how about you? What's your Java 8 experience? Or Java 8 versus Java 11 in your production instances? No, it's exactly the same than, than James. We are waiting for, for Mike to run. So it's Java 8. All yeah. right. And somehow I knew you both were going to throw me under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> and I assume Kenny is yours the same story there? Let me get off mute. Um, yeah, it's the same story. It's, we're still Java 8 here. Great. Okay. Good Good to know. Thank you. Forgive the impromptu survey. I know it's unscientific, et cetera, but I, I suspect we've, we've already heard a good representative sample just by that. Great. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Um, and what's, what's next? Um, I'm not aware of anything offhand, and it's mostly because I haven't um, maybe dug deep enough, but I'm not aware of any major Java 11 related updates in, uh, for the September LTS, um, but I'm not as involved day to day in, in some of that, so I don't. It's quite possible there's some things I don't know about. Um, I think if anything, it'll just be incremental. You know, maybe some more plugins have been fixed. Some of those plugin issues or core issues have been resolved. Um, but I don't know if there's anything actively in progress or targeted for that. So I had started on that first bullet, I had started a mailing list thread proposing that we would switch the switch additional defaults to Java 11. Um, with the September LTS, the particular examples there were the Docker images. So today we ship a Docker image that's based on Debian with, so we have a Docker image named Jenkins slash Jenkins colon LTS. 
So it's ambiguously named in terms of it doesn't promise what JDK it's running. It doesn't promise what operating system it's running. And my proposal was September might be a good time to upgrade its operating system from Debian Buster, the current thing it's shipping, to Debian Bullseye. So Debian from Debian 10 to Debian 11 and use that same place to upgrade that thing from JDK 8 to JDK 11 is the thing we're shipping. So the, the idea there was Daniel Beck had lobbied, hey, please don't change those kind of major things except on the edge of an LTS, you know, a dot one LTS release. So, so my proposal there had been. <laughs> Interesting. I would have said, really, do you want to throw all of those changes in along with an LTS change? Right, I mean, right. Sure, you don't want to do it with a security fix, but I would have thought it, it, I don't know if there's a possibility of doing a release that is, uh, uh, it's not a Jenkins release, it's just a container release midway uh, well, through. And, and I think, I think you've got a good point, James. And, and that actually is a, it was one of the, so when the last time we did a Docker change, what we did is we did it sort of midstream. And, and one concept might be, what if we did the switch from the, the, the image switch in a weekly first and change the Docker image weekly four or six weeks prior to LTS and then admitted we will change the LTS on a dot one after we've had four or six weeks of, of testing the same kind of change in weekly. I think that might be sort of what you're what you're you're describing. Yeah, it, it's you tend to get. Well, the the experience I've had is you tend to get different users using LTS than you do do using the weeklies, and they tend to have kind of maybe a different plugin set. People running the weeklies. Um, either don't know about the LTS <laughs> or, or, or they're highly skilled Jenkins admins and they kind of curate their plugin lists and remove plugins when they become no longer used on their instances. Whereas the LTS is uh, kind of like, they, they might've been running for a lot longer by maybe people that aren't uh, as, as diligent in kind of removing plugins when they don't get um, uh, when they're no longer needed, they just kind of like stay there and they just upgrade stuff. And it's kind of like, well, I upgrade, upgrade, up to get kind of thing. Um, so I'm, I'm, I would be cautious at saying that there's the same coverage between weeklies that you would have. Is there, would there be enough overlap uh, would, would just be what I would be unsure about. So, so the, the notion there is, while, while it might be a, I guess, let me test it at sort of a different angle. Would you object if weekly switched from Java 8 to Java 11 at a different Absol time than LTS? Absolutely not. Okay, so so that's that's not a barrier. It may it may it might be considered necessary, but not sufficient. There may be still even much more we need to do before we dare to change the LTS from from Java eight to I Java mean, eleven. Uh, what I if can you correct me if I'm wrong? Are we currently publishing both a Java eight and a Java? 11 image and it's just what is the default the, we are publishing both a java 8 and a java 11 image and and the change would be that's actually a very good point today we have a thing named jenkins slash jenkins colon latest and the proposal was switch that to java 11 but the problem is that leaves no docker image that's delivering java 8 then for the so weekly do, should we not introduce then a Java 8 one for the weekly? I, that, and, I think, and then it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, and I think, I think that's a good idea that maybe we should declare, all right, to keep, to keep transition 
viable, we say, look, we admit we were ambiguous. We should have had an image all the while that was called JDK-8. And now we're going to create one, call it Jenkins Jenkins colon JDK-8 for those who want to remain with JDK-8. And, until support is removed in right, the until future. We, yeah. Until we stop yeah. doing JDK-8. Yeah, that would have the benefit that, okay, by default, they switch from 8 to 11. And if they say, no, the default's unacceptable, they have a place to return to if they'll change their configuration. Right. Right. Or if there's issues. Right. Because I, I, I don't think anyone would say, 11 is unacceptable. We're mandated to run Java 8. Well, I'm sure there's going to be someone that would, but um, yeah, it, it's, it's just the... Yeah, it upgrades and it all goes bang. Um, okay, I, I think I think at least for me that seems like a viable thing. Ivan, what do you think? Yeah, the, right now we we release and the the default tag for for the GDK eight, and also we 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 release LTS dash GDK eleven, if I record correctly. So we can add. Another tag that is uh, LTS or whatever we version we want to release dash uh, GDK eight and that's it. We keep the default with eleven and we release another two tags, one for GDK eight and another for GDK eleven. Right. Okay. Good. So so that that makes sense to you, uh, Marcel. I think that would not affect your your system at all, right? Because you've already made your base image use the dash JDK 11 variant. Yeah, I'm not affected with that. Thing. Great. And and so I, I think that's that at least for me seems viable. Mike, do you see any barriers to that kind of idea? Anything that we should be worried about? Um, I mean, the only thing that comes to mind would be if we don't advertise that we've made this change loud and clear. People might be a little confused or surprised when they just grab or base their image off of uh, Jenkins colon latest. Um, I don't really know any way around that because I don't, can't really change that name pattern um, of the Jenkins slash Jenkins colon latest um, so that there's only ever explicit JDK version. So as long as we do a good job of communicating across the mediums that we've made this switch in the default, but you're welcome to still pick a JDK specific, whether it's eight or 11 base image um, for any given release. It shouldn't be a huge disruption, even in the worst cases, I think. Okay, good. That, make, that makes sense to me. All right, so, so now that, that touches and the slide has the next topic is Java 17. Are there other things we need to discuss around Java 11? For me, what, what's been proposed feels viable and answers one of my big concerns, which was some of the threads on the, on the initial September LTS idea said, hey, let's just drop Java 8 at, at September. And for me, that's too big of a drop this soon, it would. It feels like to me we need three or six months more than that at least to get the word out, to get more people onto Java 11 before we would dare consider dropping Java 8. Do others have a different approach on that? Do you feel differently than that? I'm, I'm admitting I'm giving my biases to compatibility and retaining things rather than moving rapidly to Java 11 fully. Uh, I would say I'm, I'm pretty much on the same page as you, Mark, um, with that approach. I think changing the default image to 11 will help get a lot of people maybe onto Java 11 without even purposefully intending to, um, which I think you know, the bigger that base becomes, the easier it's going to be to to drop the Java 8 support sometime down the road. So. You know, but uh, one thing I think you have to remember for some people, like for example, one of the reasons, like we have a technical reason for having to stick with Java 8. We also have a procedural one because we do a lot of work for the U.S. government, and we've been through multiple rounds of compliance and stuff. I know there's better ways of doing that, but the other one also is that with OpenJDK, um, 
after support ends in 2022, but they're continuing support for security to 2025. Now, um, end of March, 2025. So there may still be people who are going to be sticking to Java 8 for quite a while longer. So I'm not sure. I know that probably is like I'm just new to all, all of this stuff. So it probably causes lots of pain on the Jenkins build and test and maintenance side, but I'm not sure. There's just a thought on my side. Sorry. Yeah. So Jonathan, your voice is saying Java 8 support may need to last quite a bit longer yeah. just because of the the requirements that, that your organization and, and organizations like it have for a stability or, or specific needs for JDK 8. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying that, that that's my, um, I mean, this, but, but I'm not, I'm just saying just in general, just because of the fact that, that there's still some runway left on Java 8, there may be other people in the same position where for whatever oh. reason they're keeping it. I mean, ironically, there's there's more availability on Java eight than there is on Java eleven. Yeah. Oh, geez. To, no, what do you what so, do you mean by that? So, can you describe that so a little more? The, yeah, the end of the end of support for Java eight LTS um, is at least May twenty twenty six, and Java eleven from, from uh, adopt JDK. Um, Java eleven is at least October twenty twenty four. Yeah. So, so, so they, by moving to Java 11, you end up with less support um, or, or less of a date. But, you know, the, the idea is once, once you've moved to Java 11, moving to 12, 13, 14, 15 and stuff it is a lot easier. Yeah. Um, so, so I think that's why they've not got it. Um, I'll just paste that there um, in the okay, chat window so, for you. Um, yeah, thank you. Well, that's what I, I think that's a good point too, is that I think sort of along with the specific discussion around 8 and 11, um, changing our mindset and approach so that these kind of things become more normal and less of a you know, spectacular event that happens once every decade um, is a position that will be good for Jenkins in the long run so that, you know, we do this successfully with Java 11 and <clears throat> use that experience to sort of have a pattern of, you know, we were able to go from eight to 11 and, you know, it's now much easier to go to 13 or 17 or 18 or whatever um, down the road and sort of have set some expectations on, you know, what a user can expect in terms of support and, keeping current at the same time. Like I'd like to see, you know, it become easier for Jenkins to, to keep up with, you know, changes in the Java world in the long run. Good point. Okay, so your, your point is it's best to keep pace with the Java world um, I've been less concerned about the 13, 14, 15, 16 because they weren't LTS. And so yeah. their, their lifespan is what, if I remember right, only like six months or 12 months of support. Whereas 17, I think they intend, and I haven't seen any variants from that, of they really intend to make it a long term support release comparable to Java 11. Yeah. All right, so are we are we at a point where we're ready to talk to Java 17 or are there other topics around Java 11 we should be discussing? Before we move on, okay. agent images, containers. Oh, good um, what the alignment with them? Um, I, I, I am completely unaware of <laughs> what, what, what exists and how they are, um, but I know we, we have historically seen issues when you run kind of a... Uh, Jenkins controller on Java 8 and an agent with Java 7 and this, uh, things didn't work correctly. Um, I don't know if we've still got an admin monitor um, to detect that kind of thing or also how the images kind of, if, if there are both 8 and 11 images for agents that would need to be changed as well or not. And there, I think you're correct. There certainly are. So it's not enough for us just to update the 
the, the controller images. I think we have to update the agent images with a similar naming pattern. And, and so that means the agent images would get a dash JDK8 suffix at the same time, and they would get uh, switch their default to JDK11. So Docker inbound agent colon latest would before this change be, oh no. Okay, now James, help me think about this. Should that be on the weekly transition or on the LTS.1 transition? Because I use the same agents in both places, don't I? Do you? I don't know because a version of remoting goes into a weekly and a version of remoting goes into LTS and those versions should be different. And ideally, you want to use a version of remoting in the agent that matches the controller. You don't want to use a newer version of of something on, on an agent than's on the controller. I know you can use an older version on an agent than is in the controller. Um, but I'm not sure it will necessarily work the other way around. It might do. Um, I, I don't know if there's... I, I honestly don't know what, what exists. Ivan's kind of shaking his head and kind of telling me no, but unmute and tell me. For, in, for inbound, inbound agents, uh, I think that the remoting is in the, in the image. But for homebound agents, let's say each one, the remoting is, is copy when you make the connection. Yeah, so yeah that's... There's only uh, we only provide containers for inbound, though, don't we? Or um, I think we provide um, SSH agent images as well. At least according yeah, to the SSH. Okay. Yeah. So we've got we've got Mike posted in the chat the link to a list of the images that. I think would need adjustment. And so the Jenkins slash agent is a base image, but then we it's turned into two images that are used for, for actual agents, right? Jenkins slash SSH dash agent. Yvonne, I think that's the one where you said the remoting is actually downloaded from the controller to the agent. That's it. That's yeah, when, when we make the, the connection, outbound. we copy the okay. bone. Yeah, so that's the outbound, and then but inbound bundles, and right now it's only got two images defined, one for Alpine to be the minimum size, and then latest. And so we would revise latest, and then we would need something, maybe latest dash JDK eight or something like it to say, hey, we're 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 touching this thing. Good. Okay. Well, that brings up a, a question I have too, which is um, what does this um, mean in terms of interoperability testing for builds on Jenkins ZI? Um, are we, you know, do we anticipate needing to, to do extra testing between mismatched Asian versions than we are currently doing today? Like that's not really an issue probably today. I'm not sure if we're doing any um, yeah, that's 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 actually a, you ask a fascinating question because I, I failed to tell people that ci.jenkins.io has been running Java 11 for I think a year or more, and so so we're already if I remember correctly, let me double check just to be sure, but I think it's I think it's already on Java 11, and has been for an extended period. Are there are there any things like ATH tests right now that run with a an agent on one version and um, Jenkins like you know a, a JDK eight agent the, and a Java eleven Jenkins the the ATHs um, just use the Java that's there from Maven and they're spinning up local agent uh, as far as I'm aware that there's a you that I think might launch a Docker agent um, for some testing. Um, and that's a good question. I have no idea what those are. 
Yeah. So, so as far as I can tell, I look at our agents on, on ci.jenkins.io and the EC2 agents are definitely running Java 11, but then they have inside there uh, a, a target or a label named Maven, and that definitely uses Java 8. And if you want to use, or, or if you want to use Java 11 with Maven, you have to call for Maven-11. So we've, we've already got a good mix of running Java 11 on the, as the agent process, but invoking Java 8 inside of it okay. to do the, the compilation. Okay. So the SSH agent connector is using a, from Jenkins Java with some build, no idea what it is, D93. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Interesting, okay, all right. Great. Are there other other topics around Java 11? What else have we missed? Those are all the ones that I'm aware of or can think of at the moment. Okay, so testing testing the waters then. We said earlier and, and I'm prone to propose a, a Jenkins enhancement proposal that would describe this more precisely, that what we would do is four to six weeks prior to September LTS, we would roll the controller images for weekly so that they are using Java 11 instead of Java 8 in, in their default images, the latest, the, the image colon latest and the the others like that, which have no Java version number included in them. We would add a JDK 8 image so that people have it to fall back to if they need it. And then we would watch for those four to six weeks um, to see if there were any disasters detected that cause, would cause us to roll back that change before September LTS. Then similar change in the September LTS now, James, I think you had concerns about too many, the, the changes I was describing, operating system update, Java 11 being too many. Are there, is there a subset you would prefer to recommend saying, hey, um, what if we did this instead? I, I think as long as there is another image so that when, if, if someone upgrades and it all, something breaks for them, it's, it, you know, they, they can just go, right, I'm, I'm going to switch to the, this other image. I'm going to report the issue, say this is broken, but I can still upgrade. It, it's kind of like not a blocker for them to upgrade Jenkins because we want people to upgrade Jenkins. So the, the more the more times we can remove a blocker, and that's if we, it's going to be on Java 11 now, and you're going to get a new operating system and you're going to get a new dot one of Jenkins. Oh, and if that for any reason doesn't work, let us know, and there's this images here. You can move to these dot eight lines, but we will be removing them at some point in the future, some point in the near future. So it's kind of like, hey, you, we, we've given ourselves almost like three months to m make sure that people can move across, maybe even less, maybe two months, maybe a month, however long it is. Um, I like that. Okay, I like that a lot. So what I put it in is, if Jenkins slash Jenkins colon LTS switches to Java 11, then they, and they had a problem, they could switch to Jenkins slash Jenkins colon LTS dash JDK 8, this new image. We've given them an escape hatch. Yeah. Um, that should be a relatively easy escape hatch for them to utilize, um, I would think. Uh, I'd, have, I'd hope so. I don't know if we can get any stats from Docker on, on the number of downloads. So you can actually see if that image has even been used by anyone. 
which you know if there's no downloads after a month then it's kind of like well okay right <laughs> that, that's good great brilliant big big um, victory we're delighted <laughs> Yeah, I, I like that. That's a good idea. The, if the JDK 8 image is no longer, does not get significant uptake, that gives us further ammunition to consider, hey, we've successfully transition, transitioned yeah. from 8 to 11. Yeah, I think that's an important um, aspect of this whole process that we should um, definitely be trying to get as much um, statistical data around uptake uh, and you know both Java 11 and 8, um, so we can make mm -hmm. smart decisions. I mean, having said that, I'm I'm kind of I'm I'm not the I, I'm the chicken, not the pig in in this kind of restaurant. If you're <laughs> familiar with the uh, analogy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm not sure who the pig is, but I feel like the pig, and I, I feel like that if if things go badly wrong, I'll I'll hear about it all sorts of ways. But even as the in that role, I still feel like we've got a, a, a viable proposal to say, hey, we're going to allow an escape hatch. I, I I like Mike's argument that we should be sure we have data to tell us how how much this the escape hatch is actually used. And I'm not sure if we've got that, but Docker Hub certainly does count downloads. So they, they've got, they could give us some estimates. Cool. Yeah, I'm sure we'll hear of all the failure cases, but I don't think, you know, I have no idea if the silent majority is happily chugging along on Java 11. Um, I think I'd like to assume that, but the more actual data we can get to back that up. Um, right, yeah. Very good. Okay. Anything else? So we're, we're about 45 minutes into this session. We've got about another 15 minutes. We've got two topics. Um, I would propose we talk Java 17 next just to see what we think about it. But I still want to get to the what kind of time frame would we consider or envision for drop eventual dropping support of eight. Okay, if we proceed through those two, 